Hey guys, it's Clay from Clear Critique. With Halloween approaching, it's time for my yearly list of the six horror films that are actually scary. 2020 wasn't the best year for horror, with movies ranging from confused, to irritating, to amateur, to comatose, but I still found six in the years past that fit the bill. First, some honorable mentions. The films I didn't find scary, but are still worth a watch. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a lot better than I expected. Perfume is like nothing else you've seen, and I'm putting out a review of it soon. The first third of Grave Encounters is hysterical, and later on offers some creepy concepts. Possessor is a lovely mix of psychedelics, assassins, and body horror. Drag Me to Hell is bonkers. And The Ruins makes the acting in most other horror movies look like community theater. Now, onto the big six. Make sure to comment below with your own list, and check out my other videos in this series. Let's do it. Starting off is a movie quite a few of you have recommended, and that's The Autopsy of Jane Doe. The first act is a crash course in establishing a horror plot. Thanks to natural dialogue and good actors, we easily empathize with our two leads. The film doesn't overplay its hand by making the morgue where this is set appear overly creepy at first because it doesn't need to. It's already a place of death. The autopsy is clearly explained and moves in stages, which keeps a rhythmic pace. This is about escalation. Since our characters are experts in this field, the moment we as viewers see something off-putting, these two don't even flinch. And when new developments puzzle them, their approach is scientific. Their fear is incurred gradually, naturally, and best of all, slower than us. We are always more scared than they are. This creates a remarkable sense of nervousness and confusion that constantly builds upon itself throughout the first and second acts. If anything, the bombastic third act is like a release. The Autopsy of Jane Doe does a great job portraying that awful, foreboding feeling that many of us have experienced in real life, when the situation that started one way turns on you. Next is Annabelle Creation. Yeah, I know, I'm surprised too. It's the kind of pick you'd expect me to scoff at, but what can I say? It scared me. It lacks significant fakeouts. After a short amount of time, the scares are real threats, and they come often. The cinematography is not only professional, but varied, giving scenes the right claustrophobia or space when needed. While there are a few too many jump scares, the amount of stillness here is another surprise. Shadows, unmoving figures, and the film understands that slowness can be scary, such as a frantic scene involving a chair glacially ascending a staircase. There are definitely flaws. The monster design could have been better. The script isn't great and contains some cringeworthy dialogue early on. The nun is a block of wood, the bullies can't act. But thankfully, the lead actress does a great job. Also, her physical handicap gives her more vulnerability, which in turn makes the scares panicky and intense. Why don't more horror movies do this? I would call this a must-see for horror fans and directors. If for nothing else, to display how much a performance and visual panache can alleviate a script's issues, especially in this genre. Plus, it's just a fun, scary movie. Next up is a short film called Toe. I don't find hardly any horror shorts scary because they tend to lack atmosphere, something with which this film is oozing. The fierce contrast of light and dark, the drawling string notes, animal heads, boiling pipes. The moment this film starts, you feel as if you've been tossed into a post-apocalyptic nightmare, maybe even hell itself. And the inherent oddness of stop-motion animation lends itself perfectly to this mood. Nearly every creative decision adds to the feeling that something is very wrong here. I say nearly because I wasn't a fan of the climax's puppetry, and those crows look pretty bad. Still, if you're searching through the endless shorts on YouTube for a quick dose of horror, this is one that deserves your attention. It's creative, it's disturbing, and it's only seven minutes.
American horror remakes have a deservedly bad reputation. If the gamut of quality here was a seesaw, the lower end would launch the higher into space. But on occasion, the US of A gets it right, and one of those times is the 2004 remake of Jew on the Grudge. This version was directed by the same person as the original, so it's no surprise that many of Ju Wan's strengths carried over, such as the setting. The Grudge makes the intelligent choice to take place in Japan, and keeps the iconic house layout. It focuses on verticality, with many scenes involving stairs, elevators, and banisters that disorient the audience. The pacing is patient, letting the atmosphere draw you in and lock you in place. And yet, The Grudge isn't some bland, shot-for-shot -shot copy either. The violence feels more aggressive, and I prefer the acting in this version. These characters are petrified and you feel all of it. The best praise I can give is that I watched the original first, it was still fresh in my mind, and yet when The Grudge 2004 ended, I had trouble sleeping. While we're on the topic of good American horror remakes, the number two spot goes to Gore Verbinski's The Ring. For starters, the haunted videotape that the story revolves around is terrifying, mostly because of just how bizarre it is. I recommend everyone to watch both tape scenes from The Ring and the Japanese original back to back to see how the films use different imagery to provoke frights. And let me know which tape is your favorite, because I'm still conflicted. Look, there isn't one right way to craft a horror film, but I prefer it when I, as an audience member, never feel safe, when there exists an ever-present suspense or stress. And this is something The Ring nails. The color correction, shot composition, and editing all create a sense of oppression that never leaves the film. The Ring's hook is inevitability, which is about as real as horror gets. The ticking clock mechanic keeps the plot moving with urgency, and the acting, aside from the appalling opening scene, sells the scares. This is a tight, tense, scary movie with an ending I wish I could watch for the first time again. And last up is the Thai film Alone from 2007. This movie was made by the same people who did Shudder, which featured in my Volume 2 video, and like Shudder, Alone is packed with jump scares and does them right. How? For the most part, the jump scares are caused by something that can actually damage someone, mentally or physically. The build-up to the jumps is effective, and the images themselves are horrific. And every moment afterwards, you're waiting, hand over screen, for the next one. The story is about a woman being haunted by a deceased conjoined twin, and the film explores concepts of dependence, abandonment, and guilt. However, it doesn't go too deep because, frankly, it's busy scaring the hell out of me. Alone does not take a lot of 10 minute breathers. The opening credits are creepy, and the last shot of her villain is just perfect. If there is a flaw, it's that there's a nonsensical twist that turns the last 20 minutes into a different movie, and not a very good one. Nevertheless, for a solid hour of Alone's runtime, I found it difficult to look at the screen. And that's saying something. Watching this late at night in the dark was a terrible idea. And one scare that I won't show got me so bad I felt it in my toes. Well, that wraps up my list. What horror movies kept you up at night? Comment below and be sure to watch the other videos in this series. I've got more horror stuff coming soon, and you can see me on Twitch on the 31st in costume. And if you enjoy the content, subscribe to my channel and find me on Twitter and Letterboxd. Have a great Halloween, guys.